Can we leave? Leave? Mm -hmm. Now, please. I don't understand. Who are you looking at? What? That guy I told you about, Carter. He just sat down at the bar. So I'm interested, what is the most traumatic thriller horror film memory that you, what is, what is the most traumatic experience watching a horror thriller that you um, I haven't really had a traumatic experience. They've all been thrills, you know. <laughs> I, I like the, the thrill part of the thriller. Um, and that, you know, was watching back in the day when I was watching the Halloween movies. Sure. I was watching um, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Mm. Those those movies really back in the day. Because <laughs> well, at you the started time, out Freddy. Well, yeah, I, I did. Oh, wow, you did your <laughs> yeah, homework. A little but, bit. <laughs> did your homework. But I, I did the TV version. Where yeah, Freddie I know, wasn't I know, yeah. there, um, but uh, but yeah. So those those movies for me, those were like event movies for mm -hmm. me because at that time, just going there, seeing those types of movies, it was it was just incredible. But you don't scare easy. I don't scare easy. No, <laughs> I don't scare easy now nowadays. Back then, I was young and I would scare easy, so it was really fun going to those movies. It strikes me in this type of movie, always the nice boyfriend is always a doomed character and never turns out well for him. You know, how, what's up? Yeah. nice guy shouldn't slash. Yeah. You know, you've heard that. Before. <laughs> how does the nice guy boyfriend make it out of a of a psychosexual thriller. We have to figure that yeah. out. We have to figure that out. You and I let's put our heads together. So I'm trying we can come to. Over there. <laughs> I mean, you would seem like you would have a pretty good shot at it. I had a shot. I did. <laughs> without giving too much away. You never know what's going to happen in this movie, but I had a shot. So I'm interested. I mean, there's so much sort of audience particip participation in sort of this film. Yes. So I'm interested. What would you do in particular situations in the perfect guy? Uh, so for instance, okay. What would you do if you found someone underneath your bed? If I found them underneath yes. my bed, it wouldn't be good for them, hopefully. <laughs> Depends if they had like a knife or a gun. Mm -hmm. If I can get to mine first, they're in trouble. If I don't have just, a gun, but I have a knife. It was just a guy sleeping there. <laughs> just a dude just sleeping just under my sleeping. bed. He's having a nice time. He's just, uh, you know, just hanging out. Just hanging out. out. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know what I would say. I couldn't say on TV what I probably would say. <laughs> what would you do if someone kept calling you incessantly? Well, that's one thing you can you can block people on the sure. iPhone. So that's, I'm good. I'm good there. I'm good on that one. You stumped me on the first one, but I'm good on that one. What would you do if your girlfriend was being stalked by some sort of psychotic ex-boyfriend? Oh, we'd have a. I'd definitely have a conversation with with the would ex. It, would it go similar to the conversation you had with Michael? Yellen it would. It would be a lot. It, it, it wouldn't be that much talking. <laughs> it wouldn't be that much talking. What would you do if you found cameras in your own home? Cameras in my home. Yes. Oh wow, I, that's scary. <laughs> You're scaring me now. I gotta go home and check my, my check my house now. Well, where would you hide a camera in a house? Well, nowadays you can put a camera like this little thing like that, and you can see the mm -hmm. whole room. So I'm a little nervous now. I think the key is if there's a teddy bear in your home. It's always in the teddy. It's bear. always it's always, in the, it's always in the teddy bear. Okay, so I or in make like sure. or in like the what is it the the thing that goes off when the fire fire oh alarm, the fire, fire alarms alarm, yeah. yeah so it's so the fire alarm and teddy, teddy bear. bear you gotta be on the lookout no none of those now. are gonna be in my house from now on they're all out <laughs> you're out no no fire <laughs> alarms no teddy bears in my house period <laughs> there's a fire oh, who cares who cares as long as I'm not being stalked. Right? <laughs> That's a good <laughs> I'm interested, how much did this character change from the page to the screen? I mean, does um, it say the same? Just, you know what, it was pretty, my character was pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I had to, it was a, it was, this was the type of role to where um, I can bring my own little, try to bring my own little flair to it, sure. but it, it is what it is, and I understand the context of my role within the whole big picture mm -hmm. of the film. And so there was, so I did what I could, what I could do with it. What sort of nuances do you try to bring into the part? Um, primarily just having established in the relationship, making mm -hmm. it believable. Um, because I think part of the movie and part of, um, part of the journey, um, in this movie is, is when the movie opens up, you guys have to really feel like we really love each other. Sure. It's really hard for us to be apart. So really it's just establishing that connection and, and the history of the relationship between those two characters, between Dave and Leah. You think you got a second shot? She doesn't want anything to do with you. Probably remembering the sex right now. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Shut up! I'm gonna wipe that smug look off your face. So you can't protect me? I'm doing everything I can within the law. I want my life back. 